Amen. All right, we are on and recording. Good. No sound, right? <laughs> so normally what happens, uh, you guys are familiar with dew point in the uh, refrigeration system. Or generally speaking, you know, at a um, short, give a certain dry bulb temperature and certain percentage of humidity, you will get, um, if you cool that air, there, there comes a point where the humidity kind of begins to condense and form droplets. And uh, the closer the wet bulb and dry bulb temperature is, the higher the humidity is in the air. You remember that, right, from way back when? Just some of the little the, the things you need to keep in the back of your mind. So, one thing is, uh, thing. These say they always operate um, the air. The temperature in that coil is just around 25 degrees. Okay, compared to a regular air condition where the temperature is um, 40 degrees. These here, the substance saturated temperature is about 25 degrees. <coughs> and typically what we will see is you don't have to record this. And what we have in here, this would be um, the air goes in here. Air goes out here, and um, yeah, air is on the inside. Yes, air is. On, yeah, air is on the inside. And uh, actually, let me. It said after one, there's going to be showers. They say after one, going into ten tonight. Uh, I hope it pours. Oh, they say it's going to pour. That represents a heat exchanger where we have the refrigerant pipe. It's a tube and tube heat exchanger. So I have the refrigerant going in on the inside pipe on the air on the outside. This has refrigerant boiling at 35 degrees, which is just about freezing. 
it condenses whatever moisture is in that air. And below here, you have a bleeder with a float valve that spits the water out, much like a steam float. For those of you guys who did hydronics and with steam, you know you have steam traps. It behaves the same way as a steam trap. And then this goes here, this comes here. Now, there are times when you're not using any air. And these things, they need to run because you're, you're using, let's say, limited amount of air, not full volume. So you, what you will have now is a very low load situation. When you have that, temperature in the evaporator coil will tend to drop. So in order to provide for that little, little bit of air, and keep the system running. Medium temperature? Well, it is going to be high temperature because it's a 25 degree coil. No, yeah. Pretty oh, close. Yeah, so it's going to be almost 40, it'll be almost high temperature. It is high temperature because um, it's just like an air conditioning system. Yeah. Because normal, um, normal standard, standard efficiency air conditioner, 40 degree coil. High efficiency, 38 degree coil. Window unit, 35 degrees coil. Oh, uh, and there's a window unit 35. Yeah, window unit always has a colder coil than, um, than regular slip or sample air. So always remember that. Don't try to get up to the same thing as a split. You're going to burn your system on real life. Okay. So. Now, in order to in order sometimes to keep this pressure, for, this temperature from going below that 35, what we put is a little um, a little valve like that, and it has and it goes. Um, That's my okay. metering device, right? Forget working. about that. Here. Oh, I see. And this will go right there. <laughs> this valve is a modulating valve, and it works on a pressure differential in that um, as it senses this temperature, this pressure goes, if it goes below a preset, it opens up and allow some of this hot gas to go in there to always maintain a pressure that corresponds to 35 degrees. So it's never going to allow that evaporator to go below 35 degrees and get into freezing mode. Guys, the pipes that they use there are Schedule A to black pipe, and I've seen that they freeze up already, and they bust those pipes. And those pipes have stick walls like this, like 40 inch thick walls, and it broke. <coughs> I mean, if ice can sink Titanic, what the heck is that <laughs> compared, you know? So you do know the force of ice when it freezes, and when it ever water actually when it freezes. So, you know, that's a thing, and the reason I kind of like show you that, that's exactly how it is in real life. You know, I worked on quite a few of these already. We built them in my shop for um, these guys, and they go by, um, volume of air, horsepower rating. So you always match these with the volume of air coming out of your compressor or the horsepower of your compressor. And that, that dehyd that's like a dehumidifier. Exactly. It is a de yeah, dehumidifier. Two two. Yeah. But it's set up differently from a regular DPA. Your, um, your central air unit is a dehumidifier. Your window air condition is a dehumidifier. A dehumidifier is an air conditioning unit. Glorified. All right? So if somebody come and say, I'm going to, you know, your house need a, you need a whole house with dehumidifier, and you have central air already, 
send them on their way. So that one humidifies by drawing the, making the air, the moisture in the air condense. Yes, because it cools down the air. You can only do that by cooling down the air. All right. Because when you compress that air, you're increasing the volume of moisture, not necessarily the amount, volume. Maybe if you get happy. Uh, and I think that's about the last thing in this here. The summary, I mean, it's just something over here I've um, been through already. But one of the things, um, uh, remember this, this will come on your, any exams I give you, as well as your midterm, as well as um, the final, mullion heaters. It's nothing that, more than a uh, heater, anything that that's... Between the doors? In the door, it's embedded in the door frame. Well, okay. Yeah, right. it's between, it goes around the floor. It goes wrong yes. and wrong. Even if you have a um, floor like this, there's the, the threshold, uh -huh. it's running under there too. Okay? Uh -huh. So it goes, the whole, tr um, all four sides. And that, is that the one that's uh, the copper pipe? that they just circled the hot gas through? Well, or is that yeah, in a refrigerator, you will have a copper pipe instead. Depends on who manufactured the system. Yeah. But they're all... They all do the same thing, mullion heaters. Right? It doesn't necessarily have to be electrical. Okay. It's mullion heating, and which is a door frame heater. And a lot of um, a lot of new refrigerators come out today. You see a little switch that says anti sweat switch. You can activate that switch during the summer. You will get sweat in. During the winter, you can turn that off because there's no humidity in the, in the home to um, sweat anyhow. So, you know, just save a little bit of energy. Drain lines should be heated. Um, condensate line. You know, typically what we do with condensate lines, if we have a freezer and a cooler side by side, <coughs> we set it up so that the cooler is closer to the floor drain. So you pass the, the freezer condensate line goes through the cooler, and then on the other side of the cooler, it exits exit, uh, into the drain. You do not want to pass the cooler part of it through the freezer to drain. It is going to freeze. And for traps, and uh, you put a trap on the water line for the medium temperature box inside the box, right below the below unit. For freezers, you do not put a trap internally. You trap it outside. Okay? And the trap is, uh, is there, and I love this. This has to keep out insect and air. And it doesn't suck that much air in, you know, through the trap. but. Basically, it's to keep out the insects. All right. But it does go even on the freezers, just goes on the outside. Yes, but freezers has trap, but it's on the outside of the freezer. He just said, he said that it can't, we can't, we put, can't it put it inside the freezer, not inside the freezer. <coughs> All right. So, just bear that in mind. Pre-charge line sets, I told you how to charge them in case you have to cut them. Yes. And that's, yeah, that's not in any book, guys, but it holds true in the field, and from experience, it works. And it saves you a lot of headache, because instead of, when you put the line together, you have to pull gas tank up, scale up, and all these stuff. No, you charge it right down here. Make the life easier. And these days, when the real Things are situated, you have to learn to work kind of smart and not um, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you try pulling up too many things on top of the roof, all these equipment and cylinders and things. By the time you finish pulling your tools and equipment up, you're tired. You need to go home. <laughs> Seriously, so you know, you know, it happens. Good. You know,
know what I'm gonna do right now. Um, this was the two longest. Review of what we did in the last two chapters. Um, this part is syllabus, so I'm going to stop it. And this is dedicated strictly to supermarket refrigeration. And guys, um, if you do not understand some of the things I'd be talking about, <coughs> ask me because this book was written. <coughs> It was written for we are conditioned technicians. So it was written on the premise that you guys were in the field for at least two years. You're not in the field, so some of the terminology asked me to explain if you don't understand, right? And it's kind of like intense more than the other two presentation we did, right? So we gotta go over <clears throat> rack system controls the whole display. We you know we covered this in the last two chapters but the, he has a different presentation here. So this is some interesting um, Temperatures, guys, write this down because you <coughs> see. And if you have a notebook, make note of that. Okay. It's supposed to be a book. It's supposed to be an idea book, right? Uh, <coughs> it is? Yeah, it's a notebook. Yes. Yeah. But, um, and for uh, somebody who were asking yesterday, 40 degrees is the cutoff point for safety, food yeah. safety zone. 40 degrees. Above that, um, two hours and you throw it away. <coughs> now, it's pretty, these are just guidelines, guys. If you go out there and fix one of these things, there's no way, no way in heck you're going to see that in real life. It never happened to me, so I doubt it's going to happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I never was that lucky to see this kind of temperature. What is that? What is that on top? Common what? Common supermarket product temperatures. You have that little book? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I have all the books. Yeah. Okay. I just wanna. I just wanna. Just make the notes and then refer to that book. Okay. Just, just bear in mind that this presentation I give you is really no substitute for the whole. Book, right? okay. So you need to follow up. I just want to have the numbers. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sorry, that question. Who else needs a book? Yeah. I went right to Tim. Who else needs a book? Yeah, that's the one. For the heat. For the freezer. <coughs> Yeah. Doesn't get wider than that. Were you transferred from a next class into? Doesn't get wider. Went to DDC, but I already did. You're missing just a tiny bit of it. All it is is the wire running up here so to the, to the, the pump in. down solenoid. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, remind me at the break. I'm gonna call up front and get a phone call. Send it to you.
Nobody else need a book, right? You guys have your book. All right. Well, yeah, bring with me, no, but... <coughs> no, you don't. Know, I'm not asking you to bring it. I'm just oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> So, uh, now, bear in mind one thing, right? When, <coughs> when we talk, this is your product or your um, box case, bo box temperature, sorry. 40 degrees produce. Now, when we were in your air conditioning class, <clears throat> what was the temperature difference between the air going into that coil? 20 degrees. And the refrigerant boiling point. Oh, 20 degrees? No, 35 or something. <laughs> oh, uh, 35 between the two refrigerant boiling off in the coil and the air going across the coil. Right. And what do we refer to? Delta, that T, Delta, Delta T. T. No. No, no. Delta T is air in, air out. Yes. That's, that's T D. Temperature TD. difference. All right. For which coil? Evaporator. Uh, uh, the evaporator part. Now, in air condition, we're not really concerned so much with T D. Once we can get the split. We are happy. Delta T, I'm happy. This, 100% dependent on that. Okay? We always refer to any of our system, okay, when you're sizing a system, they always ask you, okay, what TD do you, do you want this system to work at? You can get it at 10 degrees, 5 degrees, 20 degrees, 15 degrees. The higher the TD, <coughs> <coughs> the, bigger, the greater the horsepower the system you will have to install, right? Makes sense. So, and typically these are 20, um, 10 degrees TD to 15 degrees. Now the manufacturer of that equipment will let you know what temperature you have. specify what it is? Yes, because right on the condensing unit, it's gonna, there's going to be a uh, data plate, and it says design conditions, 10 degrees TD, or they will give you temperatures in and out, and that will make you determine, because <coughs> if it's not written, just go on the assumption that here, 10 degrees, 15 degrees between that, and it will, Right? Because more often than not, it, it does not go above, uh, it does not go to the 20 degrees or even 25 degrees like an air condition. So, now this ice cream, this is hard ice cream, frozen ice cream. That's where the normal way keep it at. So, for this produce box, my evaporator suction temperature will always be 30 degrees. This, it's going to be 26 degrees, 24, 18. Minus 15. Minus 15, minus 20, minus 25. Negative 25. Right. And these guides will will actually give you an idea what type of refrigerant you're going to use. You're going to need, yeah, just because that. from here going down, we, chances are we'll use R404 A refrigerant. And from here going up, R134 A, because these are the higher temperatures and these are the lower temperatures. With R404 <coughs> and R22, they're kind of mirror images on the PT chart. So you may get the R404 that at the um, at 15, at zero PSIG, should boil somewhere around negative 43 or negative 45 degrees. So you will be able to get to these lower temperatures without that compressor going into a vacuum. So normally I will see compressors running as low as about 3 PSI on the suction side. Okay. And what and about, what about four, what is it, 408 or 409? 404. I'm saying, but what about 408 or, <coughs> or is it 409? That's a low temperature one too, isn't it? 409 is a replacement for R12. 408 is for 502, which is low temperature, but 404, 408 is a 8 CFC. Okay. All right? Yeah. This is pure HF. HF. HFC. Yeah. Oh, so they're doing away with the 408? 
Yes, yes, yes. Had the 408- I, I still have it, but I'm saying that they're trying to get rid of it. No, not yet. No, nobody has mandated anything about the 408 or 409. But there, um, both used to be dropping replacement 409 for R12, but they're ACFC. And uh, 408 for 502? 408 for 502. And the thing is, the price of that is so high, they go for, like, right now it's about $418 plus taxes. And 404 is um, $167 plus taxes. Guess which one I buy? Yeah. 404. <laughs> Good. Mm-hmm. And it's an HFC. Yes. So it's a, it has a um, zero ODP, right? So they say. <laughs> Can I see that? What the hell is freeze it. Lights, you got it. The lights. It's, a, it's, it's just a milk. Deli, milk well, it's um, open front end, which is what yeah. we were dealing with all the time. Just but these, doors you know where you see this? In the 7-Eleven. Yeah. Also, though, my supermarket has that. Yeah, your supermarket will have this. This is an open dairy case. Yeah, open. And you see where these grills are? That's where the air come up and form the air carton in front there. That's They're on the inside, actually. So <coughs> there is always that air carton. Yeah, right. The one good thing about this, it has a little lip here, so you can't put a box over it. Right, right. The box would kind of fall out from it. Sorry, it wouldn't allow you to slide the box and break the air cord in. Stupid, stupid, Parallel rack system, we cover this, so service different um, thing. <clears throat> I don't know, honestly, where they put this chapter in the thing, which is also really right here. Let me turn this off here. This is it. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, wow, what a difference. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is what your rack system in real life looks like. It looks intimidating, it's not. What's <coughs> difficult about these things is if you, ha- let's say you had a leak right here and you have to change one of these, you see how rigid those pipes are? Mm-hmm. It's, you have to cut it out and put in nipples and do all kind of crap just to get that fixed back. So it's just because they are so compact that they are hard to work on physically. But troubleshooting is saying, if you notice all the, all the valves, everything in here, the electrical, everything. These are, um, these are all my EPRs will be here. Okay. As well as the liquid line solenoid to each box. The pump still The pump down solenoid. <coughs> They're not going to be in individual boxes. What's going to be in the individual box is um, the thermostat. Just a temperature probe. All right, just a temperature probe. And with the kind of um, newfangled thermostat we have now, they can put a sensor in the box and bring the thermostat <coughs> right into a main controller. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all you may see is a little little stupid thing like this, shiny, which is a, um, in this case, I did speak about end PTC, no, PTC and thermistors, right? Which the thermistors, uh, the resistance vary with temperature. Mm-hmm. Pos- PTC is positive well, temperature, the as temperature increase, yeah. Yeah. resistance the increase. And then this no. is end negative temperature. Now, for these here that senses low temperature, they may have the NTC, which is negative temperature. Yeah. Right? And as the, res- resist- as the heat increases, temperature de- uh, resistance decreases. That's why the negative. Okay? It works contrary to the other ones. So these are my compressors in this rack. This, this here should be. Um, An oil filter, it should be. Oil separate. Oil separate. No, it more, more looks like an oil on filter. The, on, the, on the, that, the other gray cylinder on the bottom. That's, like is that, that a chill water condenser? Is that, a, is is that, that a, like a suction accumulator? Or a, is that like a, what, a receiver or something? The one that looks the, like a, um, 
oil, uh, oil separator, oil separator. Right? and this is going to be the filter. That's the filter. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, because it's 0.5. Yeah, and you see how all of these have, all these little things here, they have the valves right here, so you can um, valve off any section mm -hmm. and work on that section in there. Okay. So all you have going to the rooms is two, two uh, <coughs> liquid, liquid, yeah, liquid, liquid line and suction line. That's all that's going to the room. So you don't have that amount of pipe in, in the um, customer service area. The least amount of pipe in and wiring you have there, the better it will be that we uh, prevent accidents. Now this is a common unit for supermarkets? <coughs> yes, you will commonly see this. And it doesn't even have to be a supermarket. Uh, <coughs> you may see it. Depends on how they design it. You may see this in a, a couple of restaurants. The high-end restaurants, you will see it. And this typically will this typically will be on the roof in a cabinet, red roof cabinet. And then the condenser. Well, the condenser. If this is on the roof, the condenser is going to be very cool. Yeah. But this and this. One. This one is probably a um, water cooler. Maybe they have remote condenser and they're out on the roof. Okay. All right? Now they're but, trying to sneak into the engine room with pet ball. Yeah. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's my liquid receiver right there. That's the liquid receiver. Yes. And uh, these happen to be my suction um, filter dryer. Those are filter dryers and for the suction, suction line. See, on these large systems, you have suction dryers. You have suction dryer as well as liquid line dryer. Reason is um, because there's so much pipe and run, you can't the vacuum cannot pull all the crap out of there because you may be you may have um, used sprays and flux, and some of that will still be in the in the copper internally, and the, you know there's a limit to what if vacuum pump can Remove. get out of that system. So what would normally happen, high side pushes that high pressure, high velocity refrigerant and everything will return on the suction, suction, suction side. side. Yeah. So this protects the compressor from getting that su those solid pieces. And the thing is, I have um, opened some of these, I find pieces of, pieces of um, solid that look like, like marbles. Very tiny, uh, like beads. From, 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 from the braids? Yes, from the brazen. Oh, from the brazen rod. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and one one time I I actually had a problem where I had um, an underfed evaporator. Yeah. And try as I might, nothing here working, but when I opened the distributor, there was a tiny, tiny bead of the brazen rod, perfectly <laughs> run, and it was stuck in the orifice. So, so I was that, that one feed it, that yes. <laughs> so, stupid day, it made me work like three hours just to find where, you know, I know there was a black edge, just to find where the guy had to shred out the piece just to see it. <coughs> so, see all my transducers. Now in this system, these don't use pressure switches, guys. They use pressure transducers that goes to a central controller, which will probably show up in a while. Okay, so everything is solid state. And transducers, they're a PCO electric device that when it gets pressure, it generates a tiny, um, tiny voltage at, a di at different, different frequencies for different pressure, and it's sensed by the controller board. And that translates that signal into, into temperature because there's a built-in temperature pressure chart in the board. Yeah, so it, look, it, trans, it translates pressure into temperature and then adjust to suit um, your superheat, adjust the superheat, adjust the TXV if you have electric TXV. 
And then I just search everything. Now, if you had if you had the uh, control like that, uh, would you would it would it show you where that little bead of solder was? Like how you just said you had to sweat it out of the distributor. No, that you would it show you the general area though where the pressure drop. No, is? it you you will measure where it is with your gauges. Right. Right. It, it's not going to tell you you have a blockage no, or I'm anything. Saying, like but if you got the fancy controls and stuff like that, shouldn't it show a pressure drop on like that section of the evaporator with the distributor? If I do have um, pressure pressure taps in there, yeah. and I have the transducers, yes, it is going to show me a low pressure. Once I have the readout, if the system is that elaborate, yes. It'll, it'll generalize the area for you. Like, well, it'll give you an idea where to start looking. Well, uh, you know what? In a case like that, it's a visual thing. The moment you go in there, you see, hey, you know what? You feel it. The temperature is high. Can you feel it on the, on the side? No, yes. With the hands? You can actually can you feel, feel the temperature the difference because you, you definitely will have a temperature difference that you don't need to have there. Yeah. When you have a, any kind of restriction, you will feel where that restriction is because there will be a temperature difference. Because a restriction behaves like a metering device. Exactly. And a, because a metering device is nothing more or less than a restrictor mm -hmm. that changes the size of the orifice well, that, you know. Oh, these, these are, this is a Copeland compressor. Reciprocating. Yeah, these are all reciprocating compressor guys. Look like And you see, uh, these that I was showing you, they close up. Mm -hmm. So you can see them. Look, look there, here. See the cover here? Yeah. You oh, can take that cover out. And those are removable cores, right? Yes, and you change the cord through That's all the way. That's what you were talking about the other day. They're yes, the removable core. Um, they, now, these have mechanical pressure controls because they, I can see the electrical pressure controls here. Uh, pressure controls are over there. Yes, that will give me my high and low pressure control. Now, is there, can I ask one question? Is there a reason why they use different brand compressors? Blit, Bitzer, what is that? Bitzer, Blitzer, Carlisle, Blitzer. Copeland. Copeland. You know, why would they um, use three different compressors? I think um, what, it, what happened, right? For some reason, they had to change at some time or the other. Right. And maybe the one was not in stock. All right, so there's no reason that it's, it's not. No, it's just which everyone was available, that's what I'm going to put right. in there. All right, just checking. Once the capacity matches, I really don't care who made it. Uh-huh. See? This is where it's bolted down, and there are four bolts. If that matches up, that's and fine. the capacity matches. And uh, is that an even rack or an uneven rack? Turn on the light for me, you guys, in springtime. I don't know if this is even or on. <coughs> okay, what's that? If it's even, these would be equal capacity. Yeah. Uh -huh. If it's on even, this will not be equal capacity. Um, it's your break time, guys. Put them, put them